Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's part 72 today and we are not back, as you can see, for a transfer special. We're back on the 29th of June, six weeks after the season finished. And I think you all know what's going to be coming over the next 20 minutes or so. We mentioned in the last episode it was a summer of job hunting. Well, the job hunt is coming to you live. If you're looking forward to seeing what's happening, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. we got a big transfer special with Emma Hempstead tomorrow. It's a blockbuster week of content on the channel. The return of Review the 92 for the FA Cup next week as well. I'm looking forward to it greatly. I hope you are as well. You can find links to all the playlists, the Twitch channel and the football podcast up in the eye above. But thank you as always for your incredible support as we get straight in to our job search with Crystal Palace. Now the reason I've come back here and I've found it a little bit bizarre. Firstly, is that our bank balance with Crystal Palace is now 73 million. And they've refused to give us an extension on a transfer budget, which has just tipped me over the edge. We have though ironically already had a very good sign in this summer i've got to point that out and to start the transfer window for the next season we have had a loss which is tyrick mitchell he was sold on for five and a half million to norwich but just behind my head we've signed a player from porto Ilias, for 16.25 million it's a really good center midfielder and he's a bit younger as well he's a french international and it's a fabulous deal considering what he should be worth a youngster from half He's gone off to Ghent, he's gone off to Porto, and Porto have sold him at a loss. I don't really understand, but still, a very good deal for Crystal Palace Football Club. Not enough to entice us, because that's taken over half the transfer budget, and they won't extend it despite being mega rich. However, there's more confusion to come, because when you left me on the 23rd of May at the end of the last season, I think I've got the dates right, it might have been a few days later, we had just applied for the Manchester United job. We sat. And we sat, and we sat, and nothing happened. The Monaco job came up. They've got a wonderful squad. We applied for that. The Atalanta jobs come up. Wasn't quite ready, so we didn't apply for that. However, after five and a half weeks, we've now got a job interview from Manchester United. Not sure what took so long. The only two that I can see were wanted for a long time were us and Wayne Rooney. Rooney, currently unemployed, obviously a club legend. But it looks like we're the main two candidates. He's just about the favourite... We were mentioned by the fans. And what I didn't realise, and I don't know if it will still be on here, I don't think it is. When we skipped at the end of the season and finished off our episode last time, there were about 22 messages left. One of them was a media item saying, what do you think of reports linking you with the Manchester United job? So if we'd have carried through and read them as we did normally, if we hadn't had such an exciting game against United, we would have had time to see that we were linked with it anyway. But now, despite it taking half of the summer, we have finally got a job interview, which we're going to attend live. So we're going to say we're glad we've been given a chance to talk to the club. The main reason we're going to say that is because there's no other options. The next one is, you've managed a number of clubs. Is that a good thing? Well, I'm ready to settle down. If I get the United job, I'm going to build a legacy. I want to win everything with them. Why do you want to leave your current job? I think we've taken them as far as we can and we'd be served by a change of scenery. Uh, developed a reputation for applying for other jobs. I've lacked professionalism. I won't do it again. I think I've said that for every job I've gone into. The club looking for a candidate capable of performing to expectations. I'm not going to say I'm confident of achieving every target because I don't want this thing of we're predicted to win the league, we finish second one year and get sacked. Interestingly, actually, it's not the Glazers, is it? It's definitely a new chairperson. I'm just going to say my record speaks for itself. Do you want to work with the director of football? More than happy to. Don't want to make any staffing changes. What are the expectations? Play attacking football. I can do that. We're going to have to change our style a bit at this club. Play entertaining football. Yes. Do not sign players over 30. Not up to me. Make the most of set pieces. Develop players through the youth system. That all sounds fine. But where do you want us to finish? Don't forget, this club finished sixth last year. And then I think went into the Europa Conference because Liverpool won the FA Cup. So we have got a chance to win silverware. But where do they want us in the league? Well, we're still not going to find out because the five-year plan, four-year contracts for first-team players, one year for players over 32, two years players over 30, three years over 28. Develop the best youth system in the country. Bit surprised they haven't already got it. Let's look at the end of the season. Okay, that's all right, I think. 
when you look at how tight the top seven or eight of the Premier League was, I think reaching the top four is realistic. However, I'm looking at the Europa Conference, I'm looking at the FA Cup, the League Cup, thinking if we win two of those, say, and finish fifth, because the Premier League is going to be tight, do we still get to keep our job? I'd like to hope so. But don't forget, this is a United side with players like Kylian Mbappe that have joined in, as well as some of the stars from years gone by. It's going to be a very good attacking team, and I'd bank on us to get in the top four. There were only a few points off this year, but because the league was so tight, the manager lost their job. I think that's fine. Regarding the best of the rest by the year after, okay. Challenge for the title by a third year, and win the Premier League by the fourth year. I like it. I think that's perfect. Should we be able to get Champions League qualification? Yeah, I think that's realistic. 134 million transfer budget. Well, we're not getting sold short here, are we? I'm going to say I could do with a slightly smaller sum. I don't need such a big budget because if that's the thing that gets us it from Wayne Rooney and we get, say, 100 million instead of 134, I'll take that every day of the week. The wage budget, I'll just agree because I've no idea what they're paying people. I don't have any further requests. Now let's hope we get the job. Is there any news on it? There's normally a thing to say we're favourite with the media after attending the interview. I'm going to wait to see if that comes. We'll be back in a minute if we get offered a job. Well, no media antics, but we are back five days later. Have we got the job offer from United? You bet we have. Manchester United approach us. We're not going to worry about Crystal Palace's transfer business. There is some good stuff going on, by the way. But Manchester United have approached us for 105 grand a week. They've reduced the transfer budget slightly, but it's still 121 million. The wage budget is the same. Our promises, no club job applications and keep the director of football in place. But this is a club where we can build a legacy. This is a club where we can try and win everything. And to get there for the start of our 10th season is just madness. It's absolutely brilliant. So we are, of course, going to take this offer. Don't forget, United will be paying a considerable amount to get us. Because if we go and have a look at our profile, it was only a few months ago we signed a new four-year deal on 60 grand a week. So technically, our contract got about £12 million left on it. But with a Premier League Manager of the Year, we've taken Crystal Palace to the Champions League for the second year in a row. We are finally getting our reward. We started in Wales at Kevin Druids, but after that, we went to Dover and we have had a massive rise through the English leagues. We're studying for our Continental A licence. We get in there and we have just been given a massive opportunity. So we're going to start the negotiations We've got one year less on the contract, but the money still overall is worth more. I'm going to try and get up to 120 and be cheeky because that would be doubling our money. They've offered 115. I mean, we can't turn that down. It's a ridiculous offer. We're set for life and we're going to one of the biggest clubs in world football. So we're going to finalise the deal. We have finally, after starting at Kef and Druids, made it as Manchester United manager. We'll be back in a moment to meet the team, the squad and the staff. That we've got to hopefully take us to the top and all the big trophies. Back in a minute. And here we are. Domenico Tedesco was apparently favourite for the job. Didn't see anything about him. He went for an interview. We know Rooney was up there too. But we, after being at Crystal Palace, Bristol City, Sheffield Wednesday, Dover and first Kef and Druids in Wales. We'll be making a return to Manchester United. And actually, ironically, because of how we did at Palace... This is the first time we'll play in the Europa Conference since we left Kef and Druids. Albeit, I think we'll do better than the qualifiers here. Our managerial record is exceptional because we've been at some great teams. After nearly losing our job in the fifth episode in Wales, back at the start of this series, what a turnaround it's been. Will this be the club where we get sacked though if we don't reach expectations? I don't know. But this is a worldwide super club and we have to take the opportunity. Let's have a look through the introduction. The media prediction is fourth, so maybe we can reach the top level there. Get back into the Champions League. The director of football, John Murta, is someone I've had many times in FM saves before. Isn't he a pretty good coach? He is. But director of football-wise, he's a good negotiator, not a great one, but his ability and judgment is phenomenal. I think he's going to be a star for us. Loads of history, of course. We want to try and win something this year. That is the main objective. Get to fourth in the Premier League and win something. Whether that's the Europa Conference, a League Cup, I don't care. This club needs to be a winning machine. They've got fierce rivalry with Liverpool. They've got no assistant manager. So that's something that's going to be done early doors by Murtaugh. 
but let's see what the squad's like at the minute. It's not too bad, is it? Wesley Fofana, Inacio should have been sent off against us in the last episode. God knows how old Bruno Fernandes is now, but the likes of Sancho, with Kylian Mbappe, Yakubu's a brilliant player. There is so much to be excited about here. It's a big step up. We know all of the club culture stuff already. I don't think it's changed. It hasn't. Let's get to the next screen. Nothing else needs to be done. All I want to know is what staff we've got and what squad we've got. Let's start with the staffing. So quite a few spaces on that coaching staff, including, of course, the assistant manager. And actually, their coaching team isn't great. So that's work that's going to need to be done. Let's see what we have got in place, though. I don't think any of the originals are there. None of the Glazers, no Ed Woodward, none of that like. So it's a completely new board and it's going to be a completely new management team. Murtau is still in situ. The head of youth development, Jack Law, is on massive money, 23 and a half grand a week. Wow. One of the best staffing members I have ever seen in Football Manager. They're ridiculous attributes. He's a perfectionist, he's got a Continental Pro license, and he's utterly insane. That is maybe the best staff member I've ever seen. Could be a world-class coach, assistant, manager, head of youth development, director of football, whatever he wanted. He is insane. Let's have a look at some of the senior coaches. We've got a goalkeeping coach, Ben Roberts. Did he used to play for Luton? I'm sure, yeah, he had a loan spell in 0203. I remember him from a very old LMA manager. He's a great goalkeeping coach, though, by the way. How long has he been at United? Since 2028, currently at Brighton in real life. There's also fitness coaches in the shape of Charlie Owen, who's good. Martin Pert, who's good. And Walter Frera, who's not bad. So, three good ones there. Kieran McKenna is still at the club here. Obviously left already in real life to go to Ipswich as a manager. But he is a very good, solid first-team coach. There's not many coaches, though. So I'm guessing the old manager, Nico Kovac, took a lot of his coaching staff with him. Hopefully, our director of football can get in a few more. There's no technical director. I can't see a loan manager. So I'd imagine it's going to be up to the director of football to do all of that. I just want to have a look at the chief scout as well. We've got scouts from all over the world, as you'd expect at a club like this. But the chief scout, Jim Lawler, is exceptional so that is really good news for us we've got a brilliant team with the people that are here we just need it to be built around in fact there is a loan manager at the bottom matt hale and he's very good too i'm really really pleased get me a great assistant manager two more great general coaches and hopefully we've got the backroom team that can lead us to success have we got the squad though we're going to start in the development center just so we can see if there's any worth promoting there's a two and a half star ability defensive midfielder there who's virtually as good as anything we've had at Palace. So that would suggest we've got some pretty good players at this club if he's not even first team level. There's nobody else of that ability, but plenty with massive potential. Look at that goalkeeper at 18 as an example of that, the Mexican. He is absolutely wonderful. The under 18s, there are actually no real stars in there. I just want to have a quick look at the facilities because of the mention about becoming the best youth team. We've got superb facilities, but not state of the art. I think I'll just ask them with some of their money to upgrade that because there's plenty in the bank balance, isn't there? 165 million is even 45 spare after you've spent all the transfer budget. Let's go to the squad, though. This is the main bit. Have we got the team to help succeed? We've certainly got a wage bill that should, albeit it's probably not as big as it is in real life at the minute. But there's lots of familiar names. One of the good things with this United side compared to some of the others in this save. I know there's still a fair few old boys. But there's not really that huge emphasis on over 30s. Like when you looked at the Monaco job for example. When you looked at our Crystal Palace squad. Some of them you've got four, five, six players in the whole squad that are under 28. Here you've got a good third of the squad that's 24 and under. And that's a real positive for me too. It's an important part of our success. I'm going to put them in position order. We're going to get the reports out. Now let's run through them quickly. We've got 32-year-old Farinez, the goalkeeper. Three-star ability. I don't think he's that good. I mean, he's solid. He's a good player. He's an international. But I certainly don't think he's world-class. I think he's a good keeper rather than a great one. He is wanted by Real Madrid. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's not great goalkeepers about. We'll see what happens with him. Dahlberg, the backup keeper, wanted to... He is 31 years of age, two and a half star ability and potential. 
I don't think there's much between them, but neither of them are the goalkeeper that are going to win us everything. That's my opinion. In defence, we've got some absolute superstars. Right back, Cristiano Gaia, just 24 years of age, Italian international. Just unbelievable. What a player. 40 games for Milan, 58 for United. First choice right back, sorted. Wesley Fofana, four-star ability central defender, still only 29. One of the best in the world. Those stats aren't far off Van Dijk at the start. Proper ball playing defender will allow us to keep possession. Played 150 games for Leicester and for United. He is absolutely incredible. We've got Gonzalo Inacio, three-star ability centre-half at 28. Portuguese international, very good. I mean, he's probably the level of sort of Mepham and Lenormand just before they started declining. Has played for Liverpool, Bayern and United. There's no doubt he's a very good player. Ben White is now 32, but still a very able deputy. Albeit, he's got one year on his contract. He's starting to decline. I wouldn't be shocked if he moved on. Jeremy Frimpong is 29 years of age, a natural right back as well. Probably a backup at this stage. He's not quite as good as Gaia, but a very good squad player. Again, he's going to be the backup right back at United. He's better than Bogle. He's better than Tormena was. He's better than Shackleton. This is a huge step up in club. I've no idea how they finish below us in the league. Alvaro Fernandez is a left back, two and a half star ability. I wouldn't be confident if he was my first choice. He's okay, he's a solid backup, he's versatile, but he's not world class. There's a two star left back, Alessandro Bordinelli. He looks even worse. He's not great. I would like to have an improvement there. I honestly think he's better despite the worst rating. But he's not the sort of player that we want to be reliant on. The next one is Nicolo Barea, 33 years of age. Unfortunately has quite a bad injury due to an international break. But is still just incredible. Brilliant mentally. You've seen nothing like it. Of course won the Euros with Italy in real life. Has got over 100 caps. Is still a linchpin of the Italy and United team. If he's here he'll be first choice regardless of how old he is. Johnny is the next one at 28 years of age, a central midfielder from Roma, Hertha Berlin, Marseille and elsewhere. He's solid, a squad player, wouldn't like him to be my starter. Russell Thompson, three-star ability, three-star potential, 23-year-old Scottish winger. Came from Barnsley and Burnley. He's very decent, I'd like him as a backup player. Maybe to play in cup games that pace him behind off the bench. Sort of looks a bit like a Theo Walcott type from Arsenal from years gone by. Domenico Siljic is two-star ability, four-star potential. He'll be down to the under-23 squad. Bruno Fernandes, 35 years of age now, but still four-star ability. Jeez, he's very good. And the natural fitness and stamina is carrying him too. So we might have to look for the first time at a 4-2-3-1 here, because we've got great wingers. We've got Barea in the middle, Fernandez as a number 10. Have we got anyone who can sit a bit deeper? He looks unbelievable still. How he's kept that physicality, I don't know. Alex Cagno, 24 years of age centre mid. Three star ability, three and a half potential. Really good backup centre mid or attacking mid. He wouldn't be a bad starter to be fair. I think he's the natural successor to Fernandez or Barea. But a very good player either way. Emmanuel Yakubu, four-star ability, five-star potential. What a striker. He can play virtually anywhere. One of the best young players in world football. He's an English international already. He scored four in six. Most of those off the bench at the World Cup too. We have to find a place for him. Philip Jaloka, three-star ability, four-star potential. Striker who can't finish. So do you know what? He reminds me a bit of Kamoy Richardson at Hemel in our other save. Albeit a much better version of him. I'm going to train him up to become a centre mid because I think he could be a real success there and probably a starter in that sort of box-to-box -box role. Another good young midfielder, Santiago Casal, 20 years of age, two and a half star ability. Needs a bit of work, maybe does need that loan. He is listed, but would certainly get the odd bit of football for sure. Marcus Rashford, now 32, still four star ability. Very good player off the left. He is exceptional. Jaden Sancho, 30 years of age, four-star ability, four-star potential. He also is exceptional. I could see those two rotating on one wing or even playing on both sides. Rashford now had 139 league goals for the club. Christos Tzolis, he is, I thought he was the one at Norwich. A good winger, not a great one. 
backup player, squad player at most. He is wanted by Inter and he's got slight concerns, so I wouldn't be shocked if he ended up leaving the club. Hannibal has made the first team three-star ability at 27 years of age, Tunisian international. He is a central midfielder by trade. Definitely will get some game time in there. Magno Luiz is the penultimate player, 23 right winger, two and a half star ability. Solid, not great, but a Brazilian youngster, you always have to take your chances. I like that he's two-footed as well. And we finish with the best player at the club. Five star ability, Kylian Mbappe, now 31 years of age. Let's have a look at him. Wow. A natural left winger and striker. I could quite easily see him playing off the left with Yakubu in a deep line role or him playing up front with Yakubu in behind. He's one of the best players in world football. It's him v Haaland in the Premier League. Already scored 135 goals for United. I'm pretty sure he'll get a few more under us. So that is a brief look at the squad. Definitely need one centre mid and one left back. Apart from that, I'm pretty happy with the squad. Oh, and a goalkeeper as well, but... There's 120 million, there's a great director of football, and this is going to be one hell of a fun save now, because what a set of players we've got. Surely we have to reach the top four. No idea how we took our Palace side above them. Shows how great an achievement it was, or how bad Kovac was. If you want to stay up to date and find out how we get on, and you did enjoy this introduction to Manchester United, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you think of the squad, what shape we can play. Not enough good defenders to play a back three for me, so probably 4-2-3-1, and then maybe we'll readdress when Fernandez retires. What positions do you hope the director of football signs in? If he gets a keeper and a left back, I'll be confident regardless. Maybe just one superstar to replace Barea and Fernandez, who are both getting on a bit too. But subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on, as we will be back in two days' time for transfer special and the first game of the Premier League season. That is against Brighton at home. We'll make sure we show at least one of the Palace games during the season too. But I think it's going to be brilliant fun. There's also a transfer special coming with Hemel Hempstead in the other save tomorrow. You can find that playlist in the eye above. But it is a blockbuster week on the channel. But in the meantime, you can find just above my head now a little playlist of tips and guides for different parts of FM22. I hope you enjoy them. But a massive thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time for a transfer special. Our first game in charge of United. <laughs>